Welcome to School Zone. My name is Amy Tregaskis, and we are going to be talking today about issues that pertain to the community here. And related to the school today, we're going to talk about kindergarten and how to get your child prepared for kindergarten. I've got special guests with me are Alex Dydring, <laughs> okay, and Kim Seaman. Alex is a kindergarten teacher, and she's taught for 10 years in the schools and she's currently teaching at Whipple Ranch Elementary and we've got Kim Seaman who also um, grandmother like you went to school here and your children did and your grandchildren have gone well one of them has finished school through Sholo schools and you've got kids in school right now and you taught for the schools so a lot of history there I'm so thankful that you joined us today on this Thanks. show we forgot that she still comes in and volunteers. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she comes and volunteers in, well, in particular, you volunteer in kindergarten yes. right yes. now. So thank you so much. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Giving back to the community, what you've already given to the community. You're a gem. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a friend has come on the show with us today. So Alex, um, I want to start off with you. I know kindergarten registration is coming up. And one of the questions I've been asked a lot is, what do I do to get my kids ready for kindergarten? Can you help us out? Yes, I can. So there's personal needs. And so we're looking at putting on and taking off their coat on their own, um, zipping up okay. their zippers, uh, and also buttoning. Tying their shoes would be fantastic. On YouTube, there's amazing videos on how to tie shoes. But there's Velcro shoes. Yes, there's also Velcro so shoes. So what is, like, but, why is that important to be able to tie? Well, we're finding that the kids are coming in lacking their fine motor skills. So being able to tie really strengthens their hands. Does that? But if your kid can do this, you know, on yes. a tablet, yeah. what's the difference between, like, what are you meaning by fine motor skills? Okay, so what I mean is um, picking up a pencil is very mm -hmm. different than doing this. Okay. And they're just this one finger. So maybe we can they're think really of it. They're really good with one finger. There's this a muscle. Let's pretend that they're getting this muscle ready very well, but lacking the other okay. muscles. And, and the coordination. And the coordination. That comes with that. So uh, tying their shoes, playing with Play-Doh. Uh, going out to the playground. Uh, getting dirty is okay. So allowing them to go outside, get dirty, get off the couch, put down that video game. I'm guilty. I really love Nintendo. I'm a big Nintendo fan. But just um, going out and working their hands. And that doesn't mean you don't have to stick a pencil in their hand and make them write for hours. It just means you're giving them different ways. If you bake. Coloring. Coloring. Drawing. Drawing. Baking, baking cookies, okay. rolling out that dough, that strengthens their hand, um, their hands, uh, playing in the sand. I know it's dirty, but it's good. It's good for them. They enjoy it, and, and it really helps with their hands. And we're finding kids are coming in knowing how to do this. Like I can hand them a computer or my phone, and they can do better than what I can do. But when they pick up a pencil or cut, it's very difficult for them. So. Okay, so my daughter, before kindergarten, she cut off her hair, and so I'm nervous to, you know, have them cut with scissors, but what type of cutting should they practice at home? So lines, right okay. now, just, you know, just drawing a line and just having them follow that line. Okay. And then if they're doing really well, let, let's do a zigzag. And then if they're doing really well with zigzags, then we can go to circles. Circles are hard. So, they're hard for me still. So <laughs> <laughs> circles are hard for me. That's why they have the die cut machine. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, just getting that practice. Okay. And just holding, getting familiar with those scissors. And, and, and also Dollar Tree has, and so does Walmart, those safe scissors that mm -hmm. shouldn't cut hair. Um, but you do have to watch them. You can't just hand them the scissors and papers and say, okay, we're cutting. Free for all. Yeah. Because in kinder, when we give them scissors, it's, we, have, we go through all the rules. You don't put your scissors in your mouth, in your nose, in your ears, by in your, your eyes. your friend's ears. By your friend's ears. <laughs> you do not put your scissors by your hair. You know, we go through all of that. And, okay. and so um, it's not, sometimes they do cut little holes in their shirts because they start experimenting. But that kind of tells me that they don't have a lot of experience when they want to try to start cutting different things. Okay. So, you know, um, at 
Walmart, I think that felt is maybe 12 cents, those little squares, mm -hmm. and they'll cut those, you know, giving them experience cutting those is always good too. Okay. And even like I buy those for my dry erase boards and the kids cut them. Um, and they're like, well, he cut it. And I said, it's okay. They just want to cut something different. It's better than cutting their clothes and they'll cut them in half and share them with each other. So they just want experience. They get excited when they really know how to do something. Okay, so that's physical development, fine motor skills. Um, what about playing outside should, would you encourage? You said the sand, play in the sand. Playing in the sand, summer's coming up, go to a water, t you know, water table, or if you're in Phoenix, find one of those water pads and splash around. Um, a lot of those places have things that you can manipulate. Um, like a, a wheel, the wheels, mm -hmm. uh, balls. The Children's Museum has like a ball system that the kids go through in Phoenix. But there's a lot of free places around Phoenix. A lot of those splash pads. If you're there, you know, if you're down there, you can utilize. If you're up here, just turning on the sprinkler and just showing the kids how to turn it on and mm. turn it off. I mean, those are skills for them, and they'll they they enjoy what it. What about Legos? I Le know a lot of kids have Legos. Are is that? A fine motor. It seems like that would be a mm -hmm. fine motor skill to yep. use. Legos are great okay. too. Um, you know, you just have to watch them because they're still at the. Don't put it up your yeah. nose or yep. in your mouth. Okay. Yep, they're still at that age that they want to taste things, um, and it's just an automatic thing. It's just very normal for kids to be. We call it being oral, just needing mm -hmm. something in their mouth. So just you know, explain to them because the smaller the Lego, the more fine motor that they need right, okay. then the larger mm -hmm. the Lego. So as you're bringing it down, it helps them. Okay. So. I remember when Sholo got swings. Do you remember when Sholo got swings, Kim? And I think you guys had to go and teach the kids how to swing and the rules for swinging because they oh. hadn't, so many hadn't been Right. Swinging. Mm -hmm. It was interesting to me. So we still swinging. have to teach them the rules for, for swinging. swinging. We still yeah. have to um, give them a little bit of time to experiment. It. Would they have to be at when school is going, and we have the the kids. It need, they need to be on their bottom. But if you take them, you can let them experience it on their tummy. You know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. And then they like to feel the sand, mm -hmm. and that's really nice for them because then they're building those muscles as they're feeling the sand. So you're telling me that these fine motor skills, I can see with writing that mm -hmm. that would be important. Um, but most people, when they think of preparing for kindergarten, they think academics. My kids got to be able to read, or they have to know, I don't know, what do they need to know academically for kindergarten? They, uh, if they could rhyme. That would be amazing. Okay. So if you are at the store and you pick up something, okay, what could rhyme with can? What do okay. you see? Oh, I see a man. Just, you know, and then giving them like little nursery rhymes, twinkle, twinkle, little star, just singing to them. Okay. Um, because they're going to pick up that oral language. So it's just them hearing it. And I know it sounds silly, but I even do it with my 15 month old and I did it with my eight year old when he was little. And I'm like, look, banana, B, B, banana, B, B banana okay. and everybody in the grocery store probably looks at me like I'm nuts but it really does help them because they remember and you're playing with them and you're interacting with them and okay. they see your face how excited you are so emphasizing those first letters mm -hmm. and the rhyming skills and tools to do that would be some good books um, or just rhyming with whatever you see yep mother Car, goose bar. nursery okay. rhymes you'd be surprised how many kids are coming in now not knowing um, Jack and Jill Things that uh, we were exposed to when we were little, uh, some of the kids aren't being exposed to. So just picking up that book and just remembering, okay, when I was little, what nursery rhymes did we do? You know, okay. uh, Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater. Uh, uh, and also Rain, Rain, Go Away. There, a lot of the kids have not been exposed to those. And just singing to them, um, those rhymes, they, they just, they eat it up. And then it really helps them with... Um, print when we start showing them print. Oh, really? So. That's great. Okay. Any other, so when you, do you have, when people come in to register for kindergarten, are their children like given an assessment at that time? We do do um, a kinder assessment. Uh, we, we revamped it um, a little bit, so it's not going to be as long as it was in the past for those of you who have already uh, brought your, your students in. 
Um, we're going to be looking at if they know the four basic shapes, square, okay. triangle, a circle, rectangle, if they can recognize their colors. Uh, we're, we are going to do a quick to see if they can recognize their letters, uppercase and lowercase. Okay. But it's... I, I want parents to know if they don't recognize all, all 20, 52 letters, it's okay. Because we will be learning them. Okay. You know, um, they could, this is your name, like Alex, what are the letters in your name? A, L, E, X. That would be great if they recognize the letters in their name okay. or, and recognize their name. But um, when we do that screening, it's just to, for us to see where they're at. Okay. And we're going to do numbers 0 through 10. And um, so it's not something that'll kick them out of kindergarten. No, nope, nope. it's just to let you know where they're at, so that you know where to start with them in the fall. Yeah, right. That's all it is. Okay. So um, before we turn it over to Kim, just a minute. I, what types of things do you learn in kindergarten? Well, we learn to read now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Right? Because <laughs> yes. it used to be the different. Uh, we learn to read. Um, uh, we work on addition and subtraction. Uh, we count to 100. Um, the kids work with larger numbers. Today I was doing greater than and less than. Uh, okay. We do science and we have social studies. Uh, we also have writing. So writing has become a, bit, a bigger part Okay. Now, you know, with the standards, they need mm -hmm. to be able to write a story and have some details to that story. Wow. So it's Easy. not the kindergarten that you're thinking of. It's not the kindergarten that I went through, my play-based Roadrunner City, half day, here's the letter of the day, okay, go play mm -hmm. for in the city. Which and was, drink your milk and have yes, a cookie and, have and go a cookie. home. Yeah. yeah. I that was the that. kinder I went to, so it's very different now. It, you know, but it's still a lot of fun. We still, that's why I love teaching kindergarten. We still have, I can still put in a lot of fun things to help to, teach, to those, help teach those concepts. It's just going to seem a little bit quicker. I think that's the, every time I have a parent who it's their first time that their child goes to kinder, their first thing is. Do you just cry for them? Yeah, they're no. like, we, well, they just say, we didn't learn that in kinder. When I was in kinder, I didn't learn to read. I learned to read in first grade. Like, what's the big deal? And I'm like, well, now it is. Now what they're asking for, where we. But you can take them from not knowing their letters mm -hmm. to learning their letters to reading by the end of kindergarten. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You're like superwoman. So, no, no, my whole team is. We, we've worked really hard, and I think, to that parent support, you know, parents supporting their, their children at home makes a huge difference. A lot of times you see those kids with parent support, they'll start reading the, with, uh, um, compared with to those much. with not as much support. But they can still do it. They can still do it. And you know what, they're so excited for it. Like I've, I've never encountered a kid that said, oh, I don't want to learn to read Mrs. Deitering. You know, they've always so excited. I want to learn how to read. I think that's great. I know that the um, school motto over there, at least at one time, it said, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Mm -hmm. And the sooner they can read, the more empowered those k children feel. So I, that's amazing. So I, want, I brought Kim on today because I wanted Kim to talk about not just kindergarten, but how do we, once they learn all this amazing stuff from these teachers, and then we've got two months off in the summer, what kind of things can we do at home with our children to help them um, maintain what they've learned and be ready for the next school year. So Kim, what are your thoughts on that? Well, if you're anything like me, I was that kind of mother that was always gonna be right on schedule and all by June 1st, we're starting this and this and this and you know, by the end of June, it's it, it all kind of falls apart. That's exactly how I am. Right? Yes. And then we're also happy when school starts again because we get back on you schedule. know a schedule okay. yes. and a structure. And I just think kids love structure, mm -hmm. don't you? Yes. I think they mm -hmm. thrive on knowing what, what's ahead of them, what's going to happen that day. They love to know what's going on. So I think that's such a critical thing that, uh, you know, First thing they're doing, if you may have a family reading time together, uh, I, I still think a breakfast together is so critical mm -hmm. in the summertime. And chores, give them chores, make sure they're accountable. They see you working, they see you fixing meals and all that. And I think kids need to have chores and responsibilities before they're free to go do what they want. 
Um, one other thing I think is so critical is that reading. You know, you talk about taking them here or there or whatever, mm -hmm. but if they see their parents reading, even the paper, magazines, reading, if there's types of good literature around the house, whatever it may be, and they see their parents reading, they think that's the accepted norm for them. And I think so many of these kids don't mm -hmm. even see parents yeah. reading. So I think that is such, such a, I, I always relied on this. What's going on in the city? What's going on in the library? Yes, okay. My kids always were in the summer reading programs mm -hmm. and we'd show up for story hours and I knew when those were when they were younger. And They do amazing, um, they amazing do. things They there do and, and they've got awesome activities incentives. for teenagers now and so. Yeah, even the parents can do some of those summer reading right. things and get little prizes. Right. I, I just, I, I can't stress enough about reading. I think that's just the, yeah. their success in the whole world is that mm -hmm. they can learn to read. Mm -hmm. um, I always gave my, par my parents, when I taught kindergarten, this little quote, I said, you may have tangible wealth and told caskets of jewels and coffers of gold. Richer than I, you can never be. I had a mother who read to me. Oh, Strickland okay. Gillian wrote that. And, you know, if it's not a mother now, because so many moms have yeah. to work. Grandma, big sister, that could be one of the other older siblings' chores. I just, I can't stress enough about reading. And... The library is full of read-alongs. That's another way for them to celebrate reading is, and to learn to love literature is by hearing it also. And um, when you're on trips, you know, instead of the iPads going on or the movie screen going on, why can't you be listening to a good good book? You know, you can find so many books. It sure so makes the books. drive go faster. Mm -hmm. Right. We right. drove to Louisiana um, twice. I've taken my children, just my children and me, to Louisiana. You are a brave girl. I, yes, I was very brave. But I checked out these books from the library, and we listened to those books, and boy, the drive went by so fast mm -hmm. when you do that. Mm -hmm. And my children got to count that as reading time. Good. <laughs> so they got ahead in their reading program. Yeah. So, yeah. I that's think that's great. a great idea. Yeah, that I, is great. You know what I think, too, Kim? Like, I think sometimes you, like my son is already reading, and sometimes I forget to sit right. down with him. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a great thing for parents to do over the summer, too. Right. Even if they're already reading, you pick up a book that maybe is just a little bit harder right. and just have them listen to it. Right. Or sometimes yes. books that they just love to hear you read. Mm -hmm. Read them over and over again. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that gets old. Right. They like to sit and listen yeah, to they that. Like to sit and right. Listen. Right. Um, another thing I remember one of our um, one of the first grade teachers suggested to me with my daughter. She said to play board games. So I thought that was a really good thing too, is to play some board games. Although sometimes that can be painful when they're competitive and don't like to lose, but I think it teaches really good skills and taking turns. Yes. And are there some games you would suggest maybe well, for kindergarten? Monopoly Junior. I okay. used to play that with my son all the time. And sometimes he still takes it out and we play it. Now he's playing regular Monopoly. Right. But Uno oh, is yeah. another oh, fantastic yes. game to play. That's the colors mm -hmm. and the numbers and the you're numbers matching. And the matching. And you've got to get Uno cards, so you're counting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, Candyland. It's okay. great for the colors and shoots and ladders, just being able to count how many, up, you know, going up and going down. Um, and we used to play Ants in the Pants. And it was so funny because, you know, he's got to get his finger, like, to to aim it just right, but and the kids really enjoy it. And when he's playing with his but other friends, but that's a fine motor, mm -hmm, a fine skill. motor skill. Oh, that's good. So that's a great game to play too, and. Um, there's so many different Monopoly versions now, and just uh, be, them being able to do it, like my son has Monopoly Junior, we've played Monopoly Party, so there's a lot of different varieties. Something that they're interested mm -hmm. in. And now Uno can come in Spider-Man, Uno can come in Mario, oh, okay. uh, Super Mario Uno. There's all these different, so maybe, you know, if you want to pull your child away from the TV or something, you can be like, look, it's Mario Uno, you know, we're going to play with Mario. So, and they see that and they really, they, they, t I think they really enjoy it. Like my kids, when we had a national day of play in my classroom, I brought in some of my son's old board games and they're like, that has Mario on it. That has, you know, and the, he's, 
they Spider-Man that has, and they get so excited that that's kind of like their buy-in. That's great. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. Well, before we end, um, we have a few more minutes. I know that you have a kindergarten camp coming up. So we're going to have a jump start program for the month of uh, June. It's going to um, be from 8 to 12. We're going to provide breakfast and lunch. It will be at Whipple Ranch. Your child will have to be, the child has to be registered. Okay. In registered Sholo. for Sholo schools. Yes, for Sholo schools okay. and have all the paperwork turned in. Okay. So, um, uh, so it's so important to come to kinder registration next week. When is week. kindergarten registration? So it's next, uh, or not next week, the following week. It's Wednesday the 26th, April 26th. Okay. And please bring your child so we can just do the quick screening and we would just love to meet the children. Okay. I love meeting the children. Um, and also for, there should be the bus farm people, uh, our bus and the nurse will be there to go over any of the if shots. If you have any allergies mm -hmm. or shots, shots so that yeah. you'll be able to talk right then with the nurse. Mm -hmm. And the bus people will be there so you can see where the bus routes, routes are. are. That's great. So, um, and also Linden will also be doing their registration the same date and the okay. and the same time. Let me just, so I want to check it. So is the kinder camp available also to Lind, like it's all the kids in the Sholo School District? We, is that what you said? Um, right now, we're going to look at case by case okay. for Linden, for them to come out. Um, okay. Right now, for sure, it's for Whipple. Okay. And then we'll, um, we're... I didn't realize that. So, Are these for any students or just your students that could benefit? You know, that's what we're looking at. We're taking every, but we're we're hoping that we can take everybody. Okay, is what we're hoping. That is our plan. That we're going to take okay. everybody, and then um, well, we were going to look at the screenings. Okay. And and but that I am think we will have enough teachers that we will be able to do it. And is it um, all the month of June? The whole month of June, mm -hmm. the okay. four weeks, and it will start, I just want to make sure that I give you the right dates, I'm sorry. It will start June 5th and it will end June 29th. Do they have to attend all those days? No, they do Does not. Does it cost? Nope, it is totally free. And we really? Will, yep, and we'll, get, we'll have breakfast and lunch there for them. Wow, that's so. a nice thing. Now, I know that all of the schools, Snowflake and Blue Ridge, they're all doing kindergarten registration the same week. Okay. So if you have a child in one of those school districts, make sure that you check, call the school to get the exact days and times, but they'll be doing something similar. I don't know that they're doing a kinder camp. That's pretty neat. What, are, what types of things are you going to be doing at kinder camp? So at kinder camp, we're going to introduce to them the school. We're going to take a tour of the school, okay. and we're going to... Um, show them the playground and go over kind of the expectations and also the expectations in class and colors, letters, numbers, patterns, uh, counting. We'll be doing all those things, but it might, it, it's going to go so quick. It will be very quick for them because those, uh, those hours, by the time they eat breakfast and then they come in to us and we take them for a little bit. And they eat lunch yeah, and, and they, they eat play. Lunch. Yep, it's going to seem like, wow, <laughs> it's like a whirlwind. But what is the goal? So what do you want to accomplish by this? For Jumpstart, our big goal is getting the kids used to getting them used to coming into the classroom okay. and to be with peers. So um, because we're finding some of the kids are having a little bit of a hard time transitioning in. So that's our goal, to be able to um, say, you know, I've been here before. I can do this. So the first day isn't just yep. I'm crying and want to yep. go home to mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for them to say, I know you, and I know you, and I know you. And, you know, you know uh, just for them to be comfortable with us. That's great. And just the, some of the structure that we, we go through. So. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited for you. And I thank you for coming on the show today. Kim, did you have any other thoughts as you've been sitting here? Um, I, I didn't. I think that... All of these things she's saying are true. That, that makes such a difference. If your child is happy at school, I think that's the most important yeah. thing. And they can, uh, they'll be happy if they're successful. So 
that's what you want to do is yeah. make sure they're successful. So to excited to come to school. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. I think the most important thing in kindergarten is for them to love to learn. Mm -hmm. Just to love to learn. Mm -hmm. Because it's the worst thing if they come to kindergarten mm -hmm. and they hate school because they still have 12 more years. Yes. Right. It's, very it's long. a long haul. Yeah. yeah. They're not. So um, come and sign up for kindergarten registration. And if you have questions, um, I would encourage you to reach out to the schools. They are happy to answer any of your questions and give you thoughts and activities to do during the summer too. I know the city has a lot of programs that are going on and that the whole purpose is to help families um, do something together in the summer. Reading is one of them mm -hmm. and that's what the library really focuses on. So thank you again and I thank you for joining us on School Zone and we'll see you next time.